Hi everybody, very welcome to Mentor and yet another video podcast. As always, I hope you're doing absolutely fantastic. Today on the podcast, guys, we're going to be talking about disruptive passengers. What do the uh, flight crew and cabin crew do about them? Um, what is the legal responsibility and who pays for it in case uh, we have to divert because of it? So stay tuned. Right guys, so disruptive passengers um, are divided into many different categories, okay? Most of the time when we're talking about really disruptive passengers, it are it is people who have psychological problems or who are um, under the influence of some type of drug or alcohol. Those tend to be the, the most common types of disruptive passengers, okay? Now, the flight crew and especially the cabin crew are well trained to deal with many types of passengers. and. Uh, the fact is that we are well aware that passengers normally are under quite a lot of stress. They might have gotten late to um, to the airport, they might have had problems with check-in, something might have happened that they didn't count on, they might have paid for bags that they didn't want to pay for. So it is fully understandable that you know that you might be in a foul mood basically or that you might be rude when you're coming on board. It's not an excuse but it is an explanation. So that is something that cabin crew are hoping that will not happen, but they, they are aware that it might happen, okay. Disruptive passengers is something else. Now, disruptive passengers, there are passengers who are actually actively not following instructions of the cabin crew or the flight crew. So, uh, there are different levels of this, and cabin crew are instructed to, to go through different phases, okay. The first phase they do is they always inform the passenger about what the rules are. So a good explanation or a good example of that is, for example, that you're not allowed to smoke and in most cases you're not allowed to carry your own alcohol on board of the flight. That will be information. So if they, the cabin crew sees someone who is doing this, the cabin crew would nicely, in a calm manner, inform the passenger that they're not allowed to do that. Now, the next step is to warn the passenger. So once a passenger have been warned, then the next step is that the cabin crew is going to come up and say, if you do not stop with this, if you do not you know, discontinue with whatever it is that you are doing, it might be drinking your own alcohol or interfering with the safety equipment, then we are going to have to offload you and you might not be able to travel or we might have to call the police. So that's step two. The third step, if none of these steps have helped, and I, I can tell you that in 99% of all cases, these two first steps are more than enough in order to calm the passengers down when they realize what is about to happen. But the third step is to actually call the police. And what tends to happen then is that the cabin crew, normally the purser, will be informing the captain, me, that uh, we have a passenger who is not following instructions and who is tampering with emergency equipment, for example, drinking their own alcohol and is not following, you know, the rules set up. Um, I will then... Um, assess, ask the number one if he or she um, wants to offload the passenger, if they're not happy to, to take them. And if that's an affirmative, as in that they don't want to carry this person, well then I will ask for the local police at the, whatever airport that I might be at to come in and help us escort the passenger off the aircraft. Okay. Whenever that happens, we have to fill in a passenger offload form um, where we, um, where we tell what has happened we also have to tick whatever rules it is that they have broken so there has to be a tangible thing it cannot be something like no I didn't feel safe for this person or I didn't like the look of that person or whatever it has to be something that they have actually done for example tampered with emergency equipment a couple of years back there was a big trend um, among people to um, to steal seat belts actually this you know take off the seat belts of the chairs and, and take them with them and use them as a uh, fashion as, as like a fashion thing use them as belts um, so we had a few cases where we had to actually prosecute people because they had been tampering with the emergency equipment other thing is smoking smoking on board is an offense it will lead to uh, automatically lead to um, to a um, prosecution form and this comes to the next next thing of this okay um, if we do offload a person because they have been, you know, 
maybe threatening towards the cabin crew, physically violent, or um, if they have been smoking on board, then we will always prosecute. All right, my airline are doing that. I'm not. I can't speak for all airlines, but if something like this happen, we will ch press charges, and the payment, whatever comes out of that, is going to come from the pocket of the passenger in question. So, so what if this happens in flight then? Um, well, on the rare occasions, we might have this happening in flight, and we go through the same kind of steps. The cabin crew will try to calm the situation down. They're trained to not act aggressively and, you know, try basically to, to get the passenger into a better frame of mind. But if he or she continues to be threatening to other passenger, maybe physically violent against cabin crew or other passengers and threatening the safety of the aircraft, well, then we will diverge. Okay, the cabin crew will be informing me. I will make sure that the the door to the cockpit is properly closed and locked and we will inform uh, air traffic control try to find a suitable airport and we will divert the flight we will have passenger uh, sorry the police meeting us up at the, uh, the diverted air airport they will escort the passenger off and they will be prosecuted now when it comes to the cost of that diversion um, the like I said the airline will be pressing charges uh, so if it comes to the fact, it's going to be up to the, to the judge then to decide, but it is very likely that the passenger who has caused this diversion is going to have to bear at least some of the cost of the diversion, which is going to be many, many thousands of euros or dollars if that happens. So basically, when it comes to disruptive passengers, that is what's going to happen. Now, will the pilots actually intervene with this? The, this differs probably between different airlines, okay? But we, uh, in my airline, the, the pilots are trained not to intervene with passengers because the ones who have the training to deal with disruptive passengers are the cabin crew. And the pilots, whenever they get involved, it tends to aggravate things. And we've had occasions where actually pilots have been physically assaulted. And obviously a physically assaulted pilot is not gonna fly very well. You know, it's not gonna be able to fly. And it's better to keep the pilots inside the cockpit where we're supposed to be dealing with the safety of the aircraft and let the cabin crew handle the passengers. And of course, ultimately the police handle the passengers. Guys, I hope that makes sense to you. I hope you like these videos and I hope you've pressed subscribe and press the notification button so that you make sure that you get notification about future videos coming up. Uh, we, I'm doing quite a lot of vlogs now as well. Most of those vlogs will be available inside of the Mentor Aviation application. Uh, some of them will come out here on YouTube as well, but most of them will be in the application. So make sure you have the application. Have an absolutely fantastic day wherever you are and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Now, for today's video question, guys, how many cup holders do we have inside of the cockpit of a 737-800? How many cup holders are there inside of the 737-800? Write your answers here below in the comments, either in the, um, on the YouTube uh, comments, or you can also send them in to me via the submit feedback function inside the Mentor Aviation app. Right. How many cockpit coffee holders do we have?